this is Wayne Karshner, and I'd like to tell you a, a little bit about a, a period in my life that I refer to as the starving artist period. From 1985 to 1989, I made a living at what I called formed metal sculpture. Using copper wire, copper tubing, sheet copper, and wood, I created three-dimensional scenes depicting farm and ranch life of the 1930s and 1940s. I called this business Copper Creations. I had dabbled in woodworking as a sideline income during the early 80s. I made a variety of items including a wooden nativity crush that I sold at craft shows. While at a craft show in Bertrand, I met Stanley Langenberg. His work inspired Copper Creations. Sometime after Mr. Langenberg's passing, I was introduced to his widow, Artis Langenberg of Holdridge, and she graciously allowed me to study his work. I must say that I was able to produce trees, windmills, buildings, and the wooden bases, but I was completely baffled as to how he managed to produce the wheels of the old tractors, wagons, and converted horse-drawn implements. Only after many months of experimenting and trial and error did I master that task. I took this picture at the mall in Grand Island of my son Corey standing in front of my first display. In 1982 I began selling my own copper creations as supplementary income and by 1984 I had expanded enough to pursue a full-time career as a metal artisan. Initially, I sold my work at uh, more local craft shows, transporting and sleeping in a first a slide-in pickup camper and later a 23-foot mini motorhome. I slept in many a mall parking lot over the years, attending anywhere from 35 to 50 craft and art shows annually. I exhibited my copper creations from Cheyenne, Wyoming to Chicago, Illinois and from Dodge City, Kansas to Minneapolis, Minnesota and all parts in between. During the summer months there were many outdoor craft shows and setting up my custom made canopy was a job in itself. My display fit a 10 by 20 foot space and therefore those were the dimensions of my uh, canopy. I remember setting up for a show in Hot Springs, South Dakota one summer. The temperature on the radio was a sweltering 112 degrees. My entire family, Moni, Corey, and Dana, yet to this day deserve my sympathy for that setup. I would be remiss if I didn't express my eternal gratitude for the support they gave me during my starving artist period and I don't recall that Moni ever actually told me that I was crazy for leaving a good job to live as an artisan. The piece you see here is what I call my first major piece. This is the first tractor and the first hay wagon that I made. I still have this piece because of a promise I made. You have to understand I was trying to make a living here. I assign no favoritism to any individual creation. I was trying to sell each one in order to put food on our table.
while at a craft show early on in my career, a lady from Holdridge, a Mrs. Falk, if memory serves, was interested in purchasing a copper creation. This piece was one she was considering. As a part of my sales pitch, I mentioned that this was my first major piece. She was aghast that I would even consider selling it. She said that she would purchase the piece that she considered as her second choice if and only if I'd promised to never sell this one. I agreed and remain thankful to her for helping me to understand the significance my first piece would hold for me today. The black and white photos that you see here and also scattered throughout this presentation were taken by a couple of newspaper and uh, magazine writers. These windmills went to every state in the Union as gifts from Mona Longley, the retiring president of the Ladies Auxiliary of the VFW. They went to each of the retiring state chapter presidents that year. Copper Creations was featured in a couple of news stories uh, and uh, the best article I think was found in the Rural Electric Nebraska magazine written by Jan Parker. That magazine article was published in October of 1988. I was also interviewed by the great Ralph Wall uh, for one of his Ralph Wall's People's programs on NTV. That was a blast. While my love of farming and ranching centered most of the subject matters for my copper creations, I recognized not everyone felt the same way, so I did dabble in uh, other subjects. I only built one sailing ship, it's pictured here. I hauled it to several shows, but it never sold. In the end, I donated it to a fundraising auction at our church, and a friend bought it. That friend gave it to someone else, and it's now at Johnson Lake, owned by a sailboat lover. I also made several Indian TP pieces uh, shown here. Each of those pieces sold and motivated me to learn how to make aspen trees and also pine trees. The rims of the wheels are cut from copper tubing and the spokes are flattened wire. The axle is a straight pin. There are around 110 individual pieces in the tractor alone. The windmill legs and support ties as well as the siding of the barn are flattened copper wire. Initially, the wire was pounded flat with a roofing hammer with a textured face. In order to expedite this process, however, I had a small roller press made to flatten the wire. There was still a lot of tapping on that wire because it left the roller press kind of rolled up. The shingles in the barn are all hand cut and individually placed. The trees are made from motor winding wire and twisted and tied into shape. Do you remember that picture of my first craft show uh, featuring my copper creations? The picture with my son Corey standing by the display. If you looked closely, you would have noticed that there were no pieces in glass cases in that display. While at that show, um, as fortune would have it, I overheard two ladies talking. They were both interested in a copper creation for their husbands, it seemed. What I overheard, as it turned out, 
most likely made it possible for much of the success that was to come. One lady said to the other, Bill would just love that, but can you imagine trying to dust it? While I don't consider myself a genius, I was smart enough to realize the significance of that statement. That conversation made me realize that if I wanted this to work, I needed to be able to place my copper creations in a glass case. I also must be able to produce the glass case myself and at a cost that wouldn't kill a sale. Oh, by the way, that conversation was heard while the ladies were walking away without that gift for Bill. Of course, not everything was sold in a glass case. I made hundreds of individual windmills that were placed on wooden plaques with a little fence and a stock tank. I also made and sold maybe thousands of trees that were mounted on uh, polished rocks. All the ladies seemed to love these wire wreaths with copper foil leaves. I made these wreaths and most of the trees while sitting in my director's chair at shows. That was a real good attention getter. I exhibited my work by invitation only at Arts in General at Lincoln General Hospital in Lincoln. And I met artists there of much renown. I was proud to be considered unique enough to even be among them. This period was perhaps the most rewarding, the most challenging, the most demanding, and yes, the most disappointing time in my life. That last Christmas buying season of 1989 was the most profitable time I'd had, but the next spring was the exact opposite. Corey was a sophomore in high school, and I was thinking about the cost of college tuition. It was difficult to acknowledge that this feast or famine lifestyle wasn't going to work going forward. I recognized that I must move on and provide for my family with a steady income from a real job. And so I moved on. I have no regrets. I recognized that I learned a lot from my starving artist period and many skills, many habits, and personal attributes that I learned during this period benefited both myself and future employers. I loved my starving artist period and I'm very proud of making a living out of creating something that people would buy even though they had absolutely no need for it. With God's help, the fear I felt starting out, the joy I had during the good times, and the pain I felt deciding to move on were each worthwhile. With His help, I'd do it all over again.